this is Carrie from Scariosities, and this is my first video on customizing a Blythe doll. This video will take you through how I took apart the head for customizing, the carving, the face up, and the details of the final look. So here I've removed the screws from the back of the head, and I'm using the tool that I'm using here is a lathe for stained glass. I used to do stained glass and I just have this tool left over from that and it's been, it, I like using it for things like this because it's plastic and it's not as easy to scratch. But it is a hard, um, hard tool that is, helps with doing the same things maybe a screwdriver would do without the damage. So I just had to kind of pry it from the, the front of the face and while squeezing it a little bit in because there's these two notches on the inside that you don't want to rip it apart because it could break those so you want to kind of squeeze the back of the head to pull it off and then on the inside many customizers won't worry about this um, spring coming apart because or, or stretching out because they use you'll see la later how I have done sleep eyes so it really didn't matter that that piece stretched out if you wanted to save it for not and not do sleep eyes you want to make sure you don't stretch it out when you open the back of the head so then I just cut off the little ring at the end of the string and remove it from that section So this is my first time opening one of these dolls, so I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. There's a little piece here um, that needs to be removed. This is the piece that you trim down a little bit to do the, the gaze correction. And if you're doing this yourself, you want to make sure that you save all the little pieces together because it's very easy to lose one of the screws and then you have to purchase them online or um, salvage them from another doll to replace them. So then here it uh, you need to stretch open the face just a little bit to pop out the eyes. And using a screwdriver to kind of push it away from the side. And it's kind of in here like sort of like a toilet paper holder but it doesn't stretch or spring like that. And there they are. It's got two eyes that face forward and two that go to the side. And the last piece is that there is a little screw in the top area. Um, I first started unscrewing this and then I realized I was kind of stripping the screw because you can't get it head on so you have to be really careful and kind of lift up the top of the head to get the screwdriver in there straight to remove it I've always loved Blythe dolls and have been dying to get my hands on one so I was really excited to purchase this this is one of the factory dolls um, so I I was just really excited to get started on one and I really enjoyed doing it and like how it turned out so you'll see some photos and some video footage of the final look at the end of this video so there we remove the scalp and that just kind of pulls apart you have to be kind of careful because there's little pieces that can break off when you take it apart and then some of them are sort of glued or sealed at the front. Here there was a little piece that was stuck to the front of the forehead, so I needed to use an X-Acto knife to kind of pry that apart, being very careful that I didn't damage the connection of the scalp to the head. And there the faceplate is removed. So 
So this type of doll, I didn't realize, has sort of a thick film over top of it. So I'll show you in a little bit how to, how I removed that thick film. But first, I am taking the eyes apart completely. There's a little notch. You have to be very careful to um, get this little piece off without breaking that. So just kind of prying it away gently with some pliers and a screwdriver to pull that off of there. And then from there you can lift out the eyes from the eye er, eyelids. And this is a similar way to prying it out of the face plate, but it's a little bit easier to pop that out. I didn't show this how to replace the eyes themselves. Um, there's a, several videos on how to do that where you heat up the end of a glue stick and stick it to the front of the eye. I wish I'd recorded it because it's so neat and it's so easy, but there's several videos on YouTube on how to do that. So I started out with some nail polish remover or pure acetone rather that uh, I use on my face ups to remove factory paint from like Monster High and Ever After High. So here I am thinking that, oh, I can get this off the same way. Well, as you can see, it was a lot more difficult than I thought. There's actually a really thick sealant over top of this, over top of the um, this face up that was done. I'm not sure if this came factory or if somebody did this themselves, but it's it not pulling up even with acetone. So I start to scrub and scrub and scrub and then I see that the sealant is starting to come off and it's a very thick sealant. So you'll see here in a minute that um, I decided to just go ahead, uh, move forward and continue to use the acetone to peel it off to get down to the original plastic. So it's starting to come off here very slowly. So I will speed this up. And once all of this was removed, then it left the plastic underneath with a very uh, sort of distorted plastic. It was, it just kind of deteriorated the plastic a little bit, so there was some damage to it. So I had to sand it, but I was sculpting this anyway, or carving it anyway. So it didn't matter, I just ha had to sand it anyway. So you can really see how difficult this is to peel up, but there is a nice plastic underneath to work with. So, once it's finally done, I'm using a sanding block to get the overall texture down to a little bit smoother before I start carving. And I'm using a fine sandpaper, fine grit sandpaper. To smooth it out a little more. All right, so before I begin carving, I'm using a pencil just to kind of sculpt or draw out the basic shape of the lip.
and then I start in with my carving tools to try to get that shape. So for no particular reason, I started with the fill trim in the cheeks, and I was just trying to get a, some definition here. I wanted her cheeks to kind of sag and her mouth to be turned up like, like she's really sad. And this is just for the initial carving and shaping. And then once I kind of feel like I have the shape I want, I start in with the Dremel to give it more, um, to, to sand it down and to shape it a bit better. This was a lot of fun, this carving, but I didn't realize how difficult this was. It was very challenging to, to carve into this doll and to be precise and careful that I wasn't going through the doll, like making a hole in the mouth. I didn't know how thick it was, so I had to be careful of that. And it really took a lot of time. I'm sure with more practice and the more that I do, the, the faster and easier it will be, but this really did was extremely time consuming, but very enjoyable. So now I'm going in with the Dremel. I have a set of these tiny little uh, round, I'm using a round bit, and that fits right perfectly into the Filtrum. And now I'm starting on the nose.
So several times I would clean it up and go back with this um, some sanding just to kind of see where she was, what, how it looked, and how happy I was with it, and what I wanted to change and or correct. So while it looks like I'm doing some final work here, I actually went back and did several more stages of carving and sanding. She's starting to look cute, but the lips just aren't the shape I wanted quite yet. So once I've gotten this far, I'm checking out the profile to make sure that from the side I wanted the bottom lip to be kind of inset a little bit. And it looks like it is where I want it. So I'm doing some more touch-ups of the nose. My kind of go-to bit was this cone-shaped one. It worked really well for a lot of different parts. So I skipped ahead a little bit and here's where I'm getting really some good shape. I redrew the lips to get that upper lip a little bit longer and carved using that as a, a base. And now I'm just doing some final touches. I think that every time I think I'm done I see something I want to do adjust a little bit more. So 
I'm just about there. I'm pretty happy at this point with how the lips look. I think the nose is pretty cute too. I've given that some the nostrils some shape and the front of the nose has a nice roundness to it. Just wanted to get that bottom lip a little bit shapey, shapely, more shapely. <laughs> Okay, on to the eyelids. So I sanded them down. They didn't have that thick overlay like the rest of the face did, but I wanted to sand them down anyway just to get a nice smooth base and get rid of any of the factory uh, pieces that might have been sticking out. Before I get started on that, I'll show you the, some of the sketches. These are the sketches that I did to decide on how I wanted to do the eyelids. I was going to do a little bit more pictures on, or a little bit more painting on the eyelids than I ended up doing just because I didn't like ha them to have too super much detail. I wanted them to be a little more simple than I originally thought. So here I'm going in with the face up. And I wanted the lips to be a little bit pink red, reddish pink, a little more red than natural. I'm using my pan pastels, which I usually use for my other face ups, and some custom mixes to give it more of a, a natural look. Blending that in with some colorless blender. This kind of face up is a lot different than I've, I've learned a lot. It's, it's pretty different than doing a face up on a Monster High or Ever After High. First of all, the texture is different. The, the, this is more of a hard plastic than a soft vinyl, so it's different to work with there. And on the Ever After High and Monster High, I'm more focused on the eyes and the shape of the eyes. And here it's mainly the getting the, a natural look to the nose and mouth and philtrum and chin and just some shading around the eyes. And a lot of the work went into getting different eye chips. I created a few different eye chips. If you're interested in seeing how I make those, comment in the comment section and I'll be happy to make a video. I also made a wig for her. So I started building color, um, shading around the cheeks and nose, and as I worked I got a little too dark and I went back and toned it down a little bit. So you may see a difference in the final doll and how I shaded it initially. It seemed like I got the shading a little bit too orangey, so I went back and toned it down. Okay, back to the eyelids. So I'm using my uh, Faber-Castell and Derwent watercolor pencils to do a little design. This doll is a, sort of a subtle uh, Alice in Wonderland theme. So I'm doing sort of the checkered blue and white on the eyes, on the lids, and then right at the 
lash line, I'm doing a little design, sort of a whimsical design. So jumping to the final look, I am so happy with how she turned out. Um, she is for sale on my Etsy shop. If you're interested in the in this description box below, you'll find the link to the shop, but she's going to be very hard to let go. I gave her some eyebrows with some blushing and some detail, like I said, around the mouth and different eye chips and her little wig. The wig can be washed and styled with uh, light heat setting. It also can be restyled into to wear down or in pigtails. So I did give her sleep eyes where her eyes can be closed permanently. You'll use one of the strings to pull to pull the eyes down to change them and then one of the strings to pull the eyes open. So this set of eye chips I did some hand painting and using resin. And then the next set, these are all resin eyes using an acrylic base. This set is resin over some, with some glitter mixed in over some craft paper backing. So you can kind of, so it would match the overall look. Her lashes are extra thick and soft. So I wanted to do sort of a kooky set of eyes. So this set was made with, I painted a uh, the background in a light blue to match the eyelids and then added some uh, mica chips in pink and then coated, covered it with resin. And then this is my favorite pair. It's a craft paper background with a uh, little metal piece of like little metal mm, I don't know what you call it a little dome shape and resin over top and this is another look at the eyelids so just that little whimsical pattern they don't match perfectly they're a little bit different each eye She's coated with several coats of Mr. Super Clear. I left the lips matte, but I can gloss those if the customer would like. So her hair is just pulled into sort of a side, messy side bun, but it can also, like I said, be styled into like some pigtails or a ponytail or worn down. And then here is the painting on the back. I made a little bunny with the clock on his bow and with my signature and date or year. And then on the other side, a couple of pocket watches hanging. And the dress was made with some new and vintage laces. She's got a suede top with some vintage lace around the collar and the lace arms and ruffle around the bottom of the arm. This vintage button from my collection, it is a pullover dress, so you do need to remove the head to pull the dress on. And then the bottom part of the dress is just made with some just whimsical details. Um, this is a little quote from an Alice in Wonderland book and just some ruffles and laces and little collages of different lace and textiles. Little stitches and 
some of my favorite lace, vintage laces. She also has little buttons and charms. There's this little chain that hangs down with the cute little bell and a key at the end. So this little bell jingles. It's teeny tiny. Little samples of vintage lace. There's one of my favorite collage pieces here. That's a little piece of paper lace with a bell at the bottom. More collaging, little charms, and a little button with some cross stitching. The fabrics were hand dyed. Another little quote from an Alice in Wonderland book and another little bell. Some ruffled up hand dyed fabric, more collaging and a little leaf charm. And there's also this cute little fabric bead. I learned this from a, uh, Amity Bloom. She's a journal maker. I'll leave the link in the description box below. She did a video on how to create uh, fabric charms and so I, or fabric beads like that, so I made one. She had some little lace underwear and her striped socks. And then her pools, I kind of went overboard with the beading. I can remove some if they are too much, but I really wanted like a nice chunky pull, something that it was sturdy that you could actually pull the the cord use it with your hands using the charms so I wanted them to fit well in your hand and they have some of the fabric beading and some natural beads and little charms and tassels at the end So here she is. Her name is Maureen. I made her in the likeness a little bit of my sister Maureen. She looks a lot like her, so I wanted to re to commemorate that by naming her Maureen. It, she also comes with these little gift tags with collages of vintage and new lace in the theme of Alice in Wonderland, a little drink me charm that can be removed and a little pocket on the front of the other. And then she'll come with this little um, thank you package with extra eyes. So I hope you like her. Thank you so much for watching.